Today, we're going to talk about some of the biggest differences between the North and the rest of the Seven Kingdoms, which mostly excludes Dorne. For simplicity, I won't go into the differences between Dorne and the North, but between the North and the rest of the five traditional realms. A brief explanation of why. If you've seen the Dorne Customs and Tradition video, you know they're a unique area as well. Dorne is said to have more in common with the distant North than either does with the realms that lie between them. An Archmaester writes, one is hot and one is cold, yet these ancient kingdoms of sand and snow are set apart from the rest of Westeros by history, culture, and tradition. Both are thinly peopled, compared to the lands between. Both cling stubbornly to their own laws and their own traditions. Neither was ever truly conquered by the dragons. The king in the north accepted Aegon Targaryen as his overlord peacefully, while Dorne resisted the might of the Targaryens for almost 200 years, before finally submitting to the Iron Throne through marriage. Dornishmen and Northmen alike are regarded as savages by the ignorant of the five civilized kingdoms, and celebrated for their valor by those who have crossed swords with them. So it makes more sense to compare the North to the other five realms and not include the other odd cookie, Dorne. It's important to know that even though this is the North versus the other five realms video, there's still variation within the North's own region. The Northern Mountain Clans, Skagos, and Cranog Men all have their own ways and traditions, which they are allowed to keep as long as they remain loyal to Winterfell. Each of them have or will have their own videos because of this. But before even going into the varying customs, it's important to know why these differences exist. There are primarily two reasons the North varies so greatly from the South. First, the men of the North are descendants of the First Men with minimal mixing with the Andals. This is quite different than those below the Neck, who even though they also had First Men blood, the Southern Realms were overwhelmed by the Andals when they invaded Westeros. The North repelling the Andals led to them retaining more of their First Men blood and customs than the rest of the realm. Although over the centuries, they have lost some some of those more unsavory First Men traditions, such as killing criminals and hanging their entrails from branches of weirwood trees for worship. They also lost the original language of the First Men over the centuries, the Old Tongue, as it's no longer used in the North, but it is still used by wildlings beyond the Wall. The retention of First Men blood can even be seen in their names, which are typically short and blunt, such as Stark, Umber, and Wool. The other reason for the differences of culture and tradition is the harsh environment of the North that hardens those that live in it. This harsh environment it makes things that may seem noble, such as courtly rituals and culture and chivalry in the South, look childish and less worthy by those in the North. First, let's talk about how the harsh environment of the North separates it from the Southern regions. Winters, without a doubt, are much harsher than those experienced in the South. Winters become so bad in the North, with snows that can fall 40 feet deep, that long ago, outside Winterfell, Wintertown was built. This town is filled to bursting, with people seeking protection come autumn and winter. This town brings people from all over, and even people of the hardy mountain clans can be found there when the summer leaves. When autumn is declared, the lords of the north begin to store anywhere from one-fifth to one-fourth of the grain they harvested, and additional food is smoked, salted, and preserved. Famine occurs if these harvests are poor. To help reduce famine, glass gardens have been built. These glass gardens are greenhouses heated by hot springs that allow flowers, vegetables, and fruits to grow all year around. In the event there isn't enough food, or more food means more of a chance for healthy and young to survive, a practice of self-sacrifice is seen in the North. During a harsh winter in the North, it is considered customary for the oldest and most infirm amongst them to claim they are going out hunting, knowing full well they will never return. This self-sacrifice allows for more food to be passed around and increase the likelihood of survival for the rest. So living in this region where famine, cruel winters, and self-sacrifice can be commonplace, it isn't a surprise that the people of the North are hardened and find the South's courtly ritual and culture to be childish in some ways. There are a few examples of this, but the best example is knightly tourneys. Knightly tourneys, with their chivalry and pageantry, are very rare in the North. The Northmen will fight on horses with war lances, but they seldom tilt for sport, and they vastly prefer hunting and brawling. These two things are said to be loved best by the Northmen. However, tourneys aren't far and few between in the North just because they are viewed as less worthy of their time, but also because knighthood is rare in the North. This small percentage of knights in their region goes back to being unconquered by the Andals, who introduced the Faith of the Seven to Westeros. Not being conquered by the Andals thousands of years ago made it that the North kept following the old gods and weirwood trees introduced by the Children of the Forest. 
To this day, the North still has little interest in the new gods, although a few houses in their region do follow the Faith of the Seven, including houses such as House Wells and House Manderley, which is why most of the Knights in the North live in the region's southern lands like White Harbor. Because most of the North doesn't follow the Faith of the Seven, they refuse to take holy orders, which mostly excludes them from becoming knights. I say mostly because there are cases of Northern Knights who still follow the old gods. But back to tourneys. Since knighthood is rare and jousting is seen as being more childish, they seldom joust for fun. Instead, they prefer melees that are borderline battles. In these brawls and for normal battle too, mail is the most common armor used, while plate is frequently worn in the southern lands. Some melees last half the day and leave fields trampled and villages half torn down. One melee in 170 AC at Last Hearth involved the death of 18 people and the maiming of 27 others. Alright, besides melee and being rugged men, how else does the North differ? I'm glad you asked. The North still practices the tradition of the judge being the executioner, as the first men and the children of the forest did. This tradition is less common in the southern realms, with the lord issuing the execution order and someone else carrying out the sentence. Jane, Rob Stark's wife, mentions this when asking why Rob didn't have someone else carry out an execution. She states that when Lord Tywin sends a man to die, all he does is give the command. Another common practice in some areas is Lord's Rite of First Night, where when commoners marry, their lord or king may bed the bride on the first night. Although this is outlawed in the Seven Kingdoms since Jaehaerys the First Targaryen's rule, it's believed some of the mountain clans, Skagos, House Umber, and definitely House Bolton, still practice it. Naughty northerners. This practice is mostly hush-hush though, because if the Starks, when they held Winterfell, knew about it, there would most likely be issues. Continuing on, the Wall and the Night's Watch are also held in much higher regard than in the South. The South, eh, they mostly view the Wall as a useful way of ridding the realm of rapers, poachers, murderers, and the like, even while some question if giving those people weapons is a good idea. The Northmen, however, hold the Wall and the Night's Watch in great esteem. Maesters state that the Northmen themselves greatly honor the Watch, and that is why it remains functioning. A large part of the food that keeps the Black Brothers fed comes from the yearly gifts the Northern Lords give them in support. But we're leaving out one of the most important customs in the North, which is guest right. The tradition of hospitality by which a man may not harm a guest beneath his roof, nor the guest harm his host. The right of guest right comes from the first men and the children of the forest. The Andals in the South have a similar rule, but it isn't viewed as importantly as it is in the North. Honestly, guest right needs its own video, which I'm tempted to make. The tradition of guest right is so important in the North that the crime of kinslaying is considered equivalent on their list of atrocities. Just for clarification, in the North, deciding to stab your brother to death one day is the same as attacking a guest protected by guest right in your own home. You just don't do it. There's one story told in the North that really drives home the importance of this tradition, and that's the tale of the rat cook who served an Andal king his son, who the rat king had killed and baked into a pie. For this, the rat cook was punished by being turned into a monstrous rat that ate its own young, not because he killed the king's son or fed him to the king, but because he had violated guest right to do so. So we can imagine how absolutely pissed the North is over the Red Wedding. Guest right was broken, the North remembers, and the Northmen have really really long memories. A lord that doesn't seek his rightful vengeance threatens to have his own men turn on him. A fantastic example of this long memory and how it affects the decisions of the northerners is when Rob Stark is trying to decide what to do with Lord Karstark, who had killed a Frey and a Lannister who were naked, unarmed in a cell Rob had put them in. Rob knows that executing the Lord of Carhold will have ramifications and mean the loss of support from House Karstark. Rob, in reference to Lord Karstark's son, says he could never openly forgive his father's killer. His own men would turn on him. These are Northmen, uncle. The North remembers. His uncle, Edmure Tully, just doesn't understand. He's like, look, just pardon him then. And Rob stares at him with such frank disbelief that his face turns red. I adore the scene just because you see how intense the Northmen are. Lord Karstark killed Rob's honor, and if he wants to be respected and keep his men, Rob has to deal with it. The Riverlands are pretty close to the north and they still don't get it or how the northerners work. The next morning, when Rob goes to execute Lord Karstark himself, he actually dips his head to Rob and says, for that much, I thank you. Despite the fact Rob is about to kill him, he's a northerner, and he respects that Rob is fulfilling the execution order himself, which goes back to their judge being the executioner tradition. Another little part of the same chapter that I enjoyed and I feel is a good note to leave the video on is when Catelyn Stark basically says she doesn't always understand northern behavior when giving advice to Rob's wife. 
Rob is upset and his wife doesn't know what to do. Catelyn tells her, When I first came to Winterfell, I was hurt whenever Ned went to the God's Wood to sit beneath his heart tree. Part of his soul was in that tree. I knew a part I would never share. Jane Child, you have wed the North as I did, and in the North, the winters will come. Be patient, be understanding. To me personally, this is Catelyn's way of saying the North is different and sometimes hard to understand for outsiders but you have to be patient and love them anyways. So those are the biggest differences between the North and the other five realms. The Northerners are a hard lot, but they know how to have fun in their own way. Giveaway is still going on this week. I have a Lannister and Targaryen poster left. To win, just leave a comment on any video published between September 13th and September 19th. And come back every Sunday and Wednesday for new Game of Thrones videos.